In this video, we're going to be going over the top problems on this first generation GMC Acadia. Now there's nothing wrong with this vehicle. It's okay to own, it's okay to buy one of these. Every vehicle has their problems. We're just going over the top ones for this vehicle. Number one, the power steering system. A lot of times the power steering system fluid will run low. And actually when you're under the hood trying to find where the actual power steering fluid goes, you don't see it anywhere on here. What you actually have to do is take this cover off. Pull the oil cap off, grab under the cover, pull it up, it's hidden right there. All right, check the fluid, pull the cap off. And actually it looks like this fluid's empty as well. Put it back in, we check it and it's right on the end there. So this vehicle actually has this power steering fluid leak, so we gotta find where it is. One of the things to check underneath the vehicle, you can see right here, there's a hose that goes really high. That's the power steering pressure line that goes from the power steering pump to the power steering rack, and right in this area, they like to leak. There's a little bit of seepage on this one, it's not too bad, but you'll see it dripping down this hose, and you may see an area over here where it's wet, and this one's not wet right now. We actually made a repair video on this, so you can check it out and see how it's done. The power steering rack itself, a lot of times the fluid will leak into the boot right here. You can see how the boot is swollen, so that's where all our extra fluid is. And you can see at the base of the boot, um, there is evidence of staining. So this is all full of fluid. If we pulled this boot off, you'd find um, a good amount of fluid in there. And at that point, the steering rack has to be replaced. That's a pretty big job, and these steering racks are pretty expensive. This is the other side, and this side's definitely swollen um, because of the oil, the power steering fluid that's in there. So we took the wheel off so you could see the power steering pump a little better. It's right in this location. It's driven by the belt. And if you check at the base of the pump, you can see there's moisture right there. Although, before you just go ahead and decide you need a pump, just look up a little further, up where the seal is, and it's actually dry. Um, I believe on this vehicle, this moisture is actually coming from the timing cover, leaking oil. I don't think that's coming from the pump itself. So be careful with that. Don't get confused and say, oh, I definitely need a pump. It could just be the timing cover. Not as common, but also a good idea to check is the low pressure hose. Comes off the steering rack right here, goes along the frame, goes in front of the frame, and then it goes into a power steering cooler and then back up to the reservoir. So check that, not very common, but it could still be leaking. For now, I'm just gonna top off the fluid, use the funnel. Make sure you use the appropriate fluid now, if you're having trouble getting the system to bleed if you made a repair, um, double check and make sure you should be using DEX-6 power steering fluid. GM updated it, and if you use regular conventional power steering fluid, it's gonna be very hard to bleed the system out, and it may take a long time. So use DEX-6 and you'll be good to go. Number two, the EVAP purge solenoid, which is located right here under the hood, under this cover. Um, now these can cause a whole bunch of issues, most of which would be a check engine light with some kind of a EVAP code, but you always want to make sure whenever you get an EVAP code to check the gas cap. You want to first check to make sure the gas cap is tight, start by pulling on it and then loosen it up, check the seal. If the seal is good, tighten it back up. Some of the other symptoms you may find with this being bad, when you go to fill up your gas tank and then you go to drive away, you may have a extended crank. The vehicle might not want to start right away. So that could be caused by that. Also, you may have a loud clicking from it. Now it is going to make some noise sometimes, but it's not supposed to be excessively loud. So that may be one of the issues. To actually replace this, it's fairly easy. You disconnect the connector right here. Just push down on that tab. Disconnect this hose. There's two tabs on the either side. Push down on that, slide it off. And then there's a bolt right there. Pull that bolt out, slide the whole solenoid out, put the new one in, and repeat the process. It's easy. 
Number three, cold start misfires. The newer style Acadias had direct injectors, which you got better fuel economy. But one of the problems was it wasn't cleaning the valves. The fuel injectors directed the fuel right into the cylinders, which is great, but the valves would get dirty and cause them to gum up and you'd actually get a misfire on cold starts. Whereas you're not gonna have that problem in the older generation. All right, so with a boroscope, I can actually see the carbon built up on the valve. You can see that's the valve right there. And this is like the, the flute of the valve or the stem. But uh, that's all carbon built up. And that's gonna cause a misfire. Let's see if I can move over to the other side. So you can check with the boroscope. If you don't have a boroscope, you can always pull the intake off and actually see this down in there. And uh, that's actually pretty bad. Yeah, there's the other one. How you repair that problem is you need to do an upper engine clean or a decarbon. And what a lot of times they do is take this hose off right here. and you run an upper engine cleaner through there while the engine's running. Um, normally you use a special tool so that it only lets a certain amount of the cleaner in there while it's running. You do that probably for about five minutes, let it run, and then you shut it off, let the stuff soak on the valves. That should eliminate some of that problem. And then you start it up, you're gonna have smoke everywhere and then you want to drive it like you stole it. Just drive it really hard, even keep it in the lower gears and get the high RPMs up. This vehicle actually likes the higher RPMs. That'll keep some of that carbon off the valves. And after you do that um, upper engine decarbon, you always want to make sure you change your oil because some of that is going to trickle down into the crankcase. So change your oil. Number four, timing chains. So we did a video on a Cadillac CTS and it had the same issue as this Acadia. The CTS has the same engine as this GMC Acadia. It's got the 3.6 liter V6 engine and the timing chains stretch. So under this timing cover is where the timing chains are. First, let's talk about how a timing chain works. So while the engine is running, the crankshaft is spinning and the pistons are going up and down, they're attached to the crankshaft. What you need to do, the reason we have timing chains, is to synchronize the camshafts to spin in the same orientation as the crankshaft. The reason you need the camshafts to spin is so that it opens up and closes the valves. There's lobes on the camshafts, so that will be timed with the crankshaft. So when this is all synced up, if you think of these as clocks, and these are all lined up at 12 o'clock. So a common problem with this system is these timing chains actually stretch. So you have this chain here, and now it's stretched out. Now that's gonna change the time of the upper cam. So the exhaust will now be pointing at 11 o'clock. And same with the intake because those chains are stretched and these chains stretch as well. When the timing chains stretch, these cams are not gonna be in synchronization with the crank. Um, so the computer is gonna think something's wrong and it's gonna set a check engine light. So there's many different codes you could get. You could get an engine position performance code or a camshaft position performance code. Um, anything related to that, it's a good idea to check the timing chains to make sure they're not worn or stretched. All right, look, this is not an easy thing to diagnose or repair. What you have to do is take the whole front of the engine apart, get to the timing chains themselves. If you can check the tensioners and the tensioners are pushed out a little bit, then your timing chains are definitely stretched. One way, an easy way to prevent this is changing your oil regularly and making sure your oil level is up to par with a good quality oil. One thing in relation to the timing chain stretching, the timing cover um, leaks oil a lot in this area. So if you see a lot of oil leaks over here, the timing cover needs to be resealed. You can pull that off. When you pull that off, you actually want to check the timing chains and see if they have stretched. If they haven't, put the cover back on, you're good to go. Number five, transmission issues. 
The earlier models had wave plate issues, which is basically a spring in the 3.5R clutch assembly. Um, those would break and cause a lot of internal damage. Most of those have probably been fixed from the factory. A lot of them were happening within the first 20 to 30,000 miles. After that, a lot of the TCMs have issues. Um, there is a diaphragm on the TCM that sometimes rips and you gotta replace that. Also, torque converters. A lot of times the torque converters will go and cause some other issues as well. You'll feel a torque converter clutch slipping at highway speeds, generally going and once you go up an incline with a slight acceleration, you'll feel like a reverberation in the car or like a droning noise. Um, that's probably your torque converter. So make sure you service your transmission regularly, put new fluid in whenever needed. Uh, one thing that is kind of tricky about this transmission, you can't get to the filter unless you take it out and split it apart. So all you can do is drain and fill or have someone flush it out. So there's our top problems for this GMC Acadia. If you've had any of these similar items or if you have other problems, leave us a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you ring that bell and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our videos.